What's the best video camera for church live streaming in 2020? That's the question we're going to ask on today's video. So I get a lot of questions and there's a lot of people wanting to know what's the best video for church streaming um, and for church video recording and things like that. There's a, what, what's the best camera that they should choose. And the truth is, is that there's not as many chances to make a wrong decision these days. There's kind of just right and more right. There's not right and wrong. If you have a video camera that has a clean HDMI out and the camera can be powered indefinitely, meaning you don't have to switch out the batteries or it doesn't automatically shut off um, after so long, then you probably have a camera that's going to work really well. A lot of the people that I deal with and talk to, um, they're kind of in this situation. This is a very common one. Once the pandemic hit, churches that never even considered going live or live streaming before suddenly were forced into it. And so a lot of people were putting like their phone up on uh, a tripod or an iPad up on a tripod and they were just talking into the iPad. And now that we're starting to kind of move back into in-person services, uh, people are thinking, well, we're just going to keep live streaming perpetually. That's the same thing that we were doing. I never live stream our church services. I would record them and then edit and produce a video after that. But now that we have a lot of people connected to us that are watching the live stream, uh, the idea is, is that even when we go back to full-time in-person services, we're going to be live streaming at the same time. So coming up with a camera that's going to give you a good quality image, uh, because when you're online, you're broadcasting, you don't want something grainy, you don't want something subpar because it's gonna make your, it's kind of like an impression. It's gonna make a bad impression on those that are discovering your church when they look and they see a really bad stream, bad quality. They want something that's, that's professional, they want something that's pleasant to look at. And so you need a really good camera in order to capture that image and get them that experience. And that's why people are asking what's the best camera for live streaming in 2020. The truth of the matter is though, is that best is subjective. So um, if, if one camera is best for a certain church with a certain auditorium, you go to another church with a different auditorium and the camera that's best for that auditorium might not be the same. So best is subjective. However, with that being said, uh, there is kind of a general rule or um, there's the idea that an average kind of in most churches, the cameras that I'm about to talk to talk about are going to be good fits. They might not be the best and they might not be the cheapest, but they're not going to be the most expensive, but they across the board are going to work well in the most, uh, in most environments in churches from the small church up to the medium and even the large churches that don't want the full production setup. Now, what I mean by full production setup is there's some kind of mega churches that are paying 200 to $250,000 for a video setup, sometimes even $500,000. They have the gigantic old kind of broadcast cameras that are that are set out and they have people actually manning them and they have a producer that's, that's working throughout the service and uh, a bunch of people that are doing a bunch of different things. And so they'll invest in an entire like old school broadcasting setup. And uh, the cameras that they're using are gonna be a little bit different. However, uh, I actually think that even for those large churches, having those big old style cameras is overkill now because you can get cameras that are this small that deliver an even better quality image than some of those old large camcorder style cameras. Now I'm going to start right off by saying that I'm against camcorders uh, simply because most camcorders are low quality, especially in low light. Um, they're kind of an old school dying off kind of thing. There used to be a lot of camcorders. Now there's only a few. Some of them will say they shoot 4K, but the image is really bad. I just, I have a bad experience with camcorders. And if you're gonna get a really good camcorder, you're gonna be paying a lot of money, sometimes even more than you would pay for a camera like this. And uh, cameras like this can get just as good or even better images than a camcorder. Another benefit of having a camera like a DSLR style kind of camera is that you can change out the lenses and you can do a lot of creative things with lenses. Um, 
you can get zoom, you know, higher zooms, you can get lower apertures. There's a lot of things that you can do with lenses. So this not only gives you a really great quality image at probably the cheapest price, but it also gives you more flexibility. So uh, I'm going to talk about three different cameras today that I think make really great live streaming cameras for churches. And I'll, I'll tell you why I think uh, these are, are really good. I'm going to start with uh, the PTZ camera. If you don't know what PTZ mean, it means, it, it's basically pan tilt and zoom which looks something like this you can see there there's a bunch of different uh, brands of cameras that look similar to this uh, you have ptz optics you have ada imaging which we sell at churchsetup.com this is um, our favorite brand this is the bird dog eye uh, ptz cameras these are the p100s uh, you can get p200s that have a little bit more zoom and a little bit better uh, sensor in them you can go all the way up to 4k um, these cameras are the most expensive camera that i'm going to talk about today and not only are the most the most expensive but if you're really going to get the benefit of the pan tilt zoom cameras you're going to need a controller like this joystick uh, piece down here to move it around because the benefit of the ptz is that they can move they can follow right so if you're zoomed in really close um to a speaker for example and that speaker begins to walk back and forth across the platform if you're using a static camera like this you're either going to have to cut back to a wide angle or switch between different cameras to try try to keep track of him with a ptz camera you can pan it and just follow the person across you know as they're moving or you know if if something happens way over here that's outside of your static camera angle maybe you have these mounted to the wall a ptz camera will be able to adjust without having to go and actually touch the camera because it's remotely controlled with a um, with a joystick thing like this so it can zoom in and out uh, optically it can it can pan tilt and and do a lot of really cool things um, and the bird dogs and and all of the PTZ things that we put on our site all are also um, NDI so they have a, a certain software or uh, technology called NDI, which allow their video feed to go over Ethernet. So you don't even need a capture card with uh, the NDI cameras. They'll they'll go in through Ethernet. So on your network, the, the camera feed is going to be put into the computer or your encoder. So uh, this is a, a video package of that with the, the three camera package, pan, tilt, zoom. So um, a lot of people when they when they understand that the the pan tilt zoom cameras can move around they they think well i only need one of them because i can move it around but the problem with only having one ptz camera is that your audience the people that are watching the stream are going to see they're going to experience that camera moving which if you're following someone on the platform it's it's expected that the camera is going to follow and pan with them but if you're trying to move from like the pulpit over to like the the piano or keyboard and then over here they're going to see that image zoom out turn around zoom in over there and uh, especially if you're if you're manually controlling it and you don't get it perfect they're going to see all the adjustments and it can be very it can just look unprofessional even though the video footage is crisp and clear and really great color and everything the movement can feel unprofessional and uh, it can really it can just really destroy your stream so if you're going to go with a ptz camera i recommend at least having two so that you can get one set cut to it and reposition the other one to where you want it and then cut back to it uh, so at least have two cameras a lot of people um, that want the PTZ functionality they'll either get two or three PTZ cameras or they'll get one PTZ camera to do the following of the speaker and then they'll get a couple static cameras they can mount on the on the wall or whatever and and put it on a certain part of the platform and use those things to cut back and forth uh, my recommendation if you're budget conscious and you want the the PTZ functionality is to get one PTZ camera and then get a couple you know of these kind of static cameras that'll be mounted uh, that will come into play. So that's the PTZ camera. It's a really good camera for church. If you're wanting a, a camera with that kind of functionality, go with a PTZ. If you have the budget, um, it's definitely worth it. But let's talk about some lower budget options. And the first one that I'm going to talk about is this guy right here. This is one of my favorite cameras. This is the Lumix GH5. Um, it is a beast of a camera and it's really good for live streaming. However, it might not be one of the best for live streaming 
simply because it's it's an expensive piece of camera. It's it's out. It's been out for a couple of years now, I think two or three years, and it's still like eighteen hundred dollars, sixteen hundred dollars for the camera. And then you also have to uh, figure out what lenses you're going to get with it, which will be additionally. The great thing about the Panasonic GH5 is that it's a micro four thirds camera, and the lenses are usually a lot cheaper than than a Canon or a Sony. Um, that are full frame cameras. Full frame camera um, lenses are are pretty expensive. But this one shoots at 4K, so you get really good 4K images. The PTZs, unless you go really high up, they're gonna be 1080, which is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, that's, that's preferred because you can zoom in optically. You don't need 4K because you're not gonna be streaming in 4K. The benefit of one of your static cameras being 4K is that uh, you can do digital zooming without degradation of the image. So if you have a wide angle showing from this camera in OBS, you can crop in, which I have a whole video about that, you can crop in to a to a zoomed in kind of view without losing quality of the image. So uh, all of the cameras that I recommend that are static, um, that are not PTZ cameras, I recommend going with 4K and getting those in with 4K. The reason this is so expensive is because it has a lot of bells and whistles, like uh, it has in-body stabilization, it shoots 4K 60 frames per second, it has actually a couple of the memory card slots, so it can record to one slot and then instantly switch over to the next one, so you can record a long time. You can get what's called a dummy battery that will power this thing indefinitely, and one of the biggest benefits of going with the Panasonic is that they do not overheat. Uh, there's people that have recorded in 100 degree weather in direct sunlight and it, it works without overheating. It's, it's an amazing, it's really a beast of a camera. However, for most live streaming, a lot of that is not gonna be utilized and it's gonna be overkill. So if that's a little bit too expensive, you can, you can step down to its little brother, which is the G85, and maybe even step down a little bit more to the G7 and still get good 4K quality from a camera. But um, we're talking about the best. If you have the budget to get these for your static cameras, they're really great. The one downside of the Panasonic and why I'm about to talk about the Sony is that the Panasonic does not have very good uh, autofocus. Matter of fact, it's horrible autofocus. It'll focus in on the background every time. Whereas the Sony, which is what I'm using to record this video with, uh, it has eye tracking technology and it's not trying to bounce and focus on the background. Um, it's staying on my face. If I move in and I move out, it's it's adjusting the focus to stay with me because um, the, the Sony autofocus is really good. That has a caveat as well though because most churches don't use autofocus unless they have someone like moving the camera around manually, they don't use autofocus because they can focus in on an area of the platform, like the pulpit area or where the praise singers stand or where the keyboard is or whatever. They'll focus in on that area and then they'll set it to manual focus and they'll leave it there so that they know no matter who comes up or, or, or what happens, whoever is standing there will be in perfect focus. That's how most churches set it up is with manual focus. So that might not be a downside. However, if you're looking to do more uh, creative things and not just live streaming the service like I have this uh, Sony set up at my desk to do videos like this then the autofocus on here might be a detriment to you but this is still an amazing camera for for creating video and doing live stream brings us to the third one I want to talk about which is the Sony a6100 this is a really really great camera it has the the flip out lens and everything um, the reason that I really like this camera is because it's it's not super expensive. Um, you can get this camera in a two lens kit with uh, 16 to 50 millimeter and then the 55 to 200 and something. So if you need a long zoom, if you have a long sanctuary, that second lens is gonna zoom in plenty to get really up close shots if you want. Um, it performs really good in low light. It can be powered indefinitely with a dummy battery as well. It shoots in 4K, so you have the, uh, the ability to do the, the digital zooming if you want. And um, the autofocus is kind of industry leading with the Sonys. Uh, this is my preference. This is the camera that we put in all of our um, streaming kits. We use the Sony a6100s unless there's, uh, you know, a request for something else. If someone's doing like outside services or something like that, we'll we'll move them over to Panasonic's because they don't overheat. These have a, you know, a, the option to overheat if they want. Um, but 
this is my favorite live streaming camera. Uh, it's about a thousand dollars and you can get the two the two lens kit we include those two lens kits with all of our um, live streaming kits except for maybe the budget one um, but this if you're asking me what I think is the best live streaming camera for 2020 I think it is the Sony a6100 um, it has the same sensor in it as the a6600 which is the new one it's just a really really great camera and you can do a lot of great things with it and if you want to do more than just live streaming you can bring it down you can hand hold it it's got in body stabilization it's got in the lens stabilization so you can get really great footage of events you can move around um, if you want you know you can actually um, get the wireless transmitter for this if you want someone walking around with the with the video feed you can actually pull the cord behind you if you want as well but it's just really flexible it's really easy to use and it's got great autofocus it's my favorite live streaming camera of 2020 so um, hopefully that helps answer your questions again this is just my opinions what's best is subjective somebody else is gonna have a different opinion and that is fine uh, because what's right for one congregation one sanctuary is not going to be the best for for the next one however I believe that if you go with the a6100 or the Panasonic GH5 or G85 or a PTZ camera you're not going to be disappointed you're not going to wish that you had gone a different direction because they're that flexible and they're, they're they have that much quality so hopefully that helps and uh, we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching if you're interested in pre-packaged streaming kits which we have for sale over at churchsetup.com you can visit us uh, if you have any questions send them to support at churchsetup.com thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video